I logged into ChatGPT today, there was a message right here that said the Mac app is now available. And then there's a link to download it, which I did. And here it is on my computer right after I opened it up, introducing the launcher. So you can set option and space to be to launch this app, ChatGPT app. And then you're just inside a normal chat box once you have this downloaded. And if you click on the words at the top, you can change which model it is, whether it's 4.0, 4, 3.5, or if you have any custom G GPTs in there. Looks pretty similar to what you get in the browser. And yeah, I'm just going to play with this and let you know if anything cool is in it. I asked it, is there anything different between you and ChatGPT in the browser? And it said, yes, there are several differences. One is the deployment in environment that you know ChatGPT typically runs in a web browser and is accessed through the website. This one runs in a specific context provided by the user. That makes sense. Capabilities, the browser primarily provides conversational AI capabilities with access to a range of predefined plugins. This environment, in addition to the conversational abilities, has integrated tools such as Python execution environment, image generation capabilities via DALI, and a browsing tool to access and retrieve real-time information from the internet. Customization context, the browser, each session typically starts without persistent memory, meaning every single time it forgets about you in the previous conversation. With this environment, it can maintain context over multiple interactions within a session and remember specific details about the user. And it says in parentheses, such as your podcast name with Ross, which is crazy because I don't remember telling it. I don't remember having that conversation with it, but apparently I did to provide more personalized assistance over time. Integration and usage, ChatGPT in the browser is often used for general inquiries, creative writing, learning assistance, and simple task automation. This environment, again on the Mac, can be integrated into more complex workflows, supporting advanced tasks like data analysis, generating visual content, and retrieving and synthesizing up-to-date information from the web. So quite a number of differences there. So let's see how it does with image processing, image recognition and processing. I have here a screenshot of, I'm currently learning Spanish, and I was taking this Spanish test, and I want to ask it, based on my results, based on the answers that I gave this test, how did I do, what did I make, make get wrong, and can you explain what I got wrong? So first I'm going to upload the image, and then I'll say, based on this screenshot, and let me know what I got wrong, explaining the correct answers. I hit enter. So it's processing and it told me on that first one, there was my answer, which was wrong. There's the correct one. And then it gives the explanation. And the second one I got correct. My response was correct. And then the explanation just says that it's correct. Um, but you can see how this would be very useful for that purpose. Next, I'm going to test its ability to take some information off of a website and turn it into a visual. So I copied a URL. I'm currently learning the software Camtasia. And I'm going to say, um, use that URL. OK, well, that wasn't exactly visual. It just highlighted some of those shortcuts. Can you make this an image? Okay, so when I prompted it again, can you make this an image, it came up with something. Okay, well, I ran into a problem. It generated what looked like a decent thing, but I can't really see it. It's so small, and there's no option to save it. There's only copy. I can't drag it out. I tried to paste it into another folder. It didn't work. So it generated an image, but I think they haven't created the functionality or I'm missing it to actually download this thing. But it looks like it's a good image. So aside from that, there's also the explored GPTs. So you have your GPT store. There's one that I created. And then you got different categories here, like writing, productivity. Canva has one, for example. Um, there's all sorts of math ones. There's the Khan Academy one in here somewhere, math tutor. So lots of different useful GPTs that give you a lot of capabilities. I was playing with one yesterday that generates videos. It uses vid.io to create videos based off of prompts. And so this is really where this tool has infinite possibilities. And then lastly, you have the 
uh, vocal capabilities. So it's listening to me right now. I could leave this running on my laptop all day. And then every once in a while, I'll just say, hey, ChatGPT, can you tell me the hotkey in Camtasia for zooming in? That sounds like a great idea for making the most out of your time with Camtasia. The hotkey for zooming in on the canvas in Camtasia is Windows, Control, and the equal sign, Control equals Mac, Command, and the equal sign, pull sign. You can try saying, hey, ChatGPT, can you tell me the hotkey for zooming out in Camtasia when you need similar information? And so, so you can just talk to it like that. And I've also used this. I showed you my uh, Spanish practice test. I've also used it to practice Spanish conversation with ChatGPT, and it does pretty well. Although the voice does have an American accent, which is weird. But yeah, that's it. That's my first look at ChatGPT on the Mac app. This is brand new, so I'm sure it's going to get a lot of capabilities in the coming weeks and months.